The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. From the gun, Clifford. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Off the play fake. Clifford. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. He's got Smith here. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, Let's take control right away. We defense. Yeah. We got the deep. We got the we got the lead. Defense. Don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets done. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Second and four. And it's incomplete. The second down pass. Throw away and incomplete. 
Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. They'll look to throw here. And it's caught by Parker. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 31-yard line. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. They'll get this out in a hurry to Parker. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. The Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. They'll run here with Balazs. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Up from his linebacker spot, Deion Jones making the play. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again, second and ten. They'll stay on the ground. Barrage again. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. They'll look to throw. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson with a pick. And to the 12. That's where it stops. The return is halted at the 12-yard line. That pick hurts a little extra because it was third down. You were already in field goal range. You know what he's going to hear all night, all next week? Situational football. Understand what's going on because you expressed it perfectly. Three points were in their hip pocket. They had those. Now those went by the wayside. You cannot make those kind of mistakes. It's what you call a rookie mistake. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. Looking to throw on second down. Clifford, open man is Hill. He's got it. And they'll get him down here at the 23. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Here we go, set. 60 out, law. Here's Kareth White, who played his high school ball 70 miles north of here in Loxahatchee. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Watch the play. Shoot. To throw on second down. Clifford, he's going to fire one deep over the middle. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. To throw on third down. Clifford. A bullet throw, but incomplete. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. 
But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover, but doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah, and they had all that momentum after getting the football, and now zapped right back in the other direction. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see. Do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit because his confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up a little bit over on the sideline? A well, second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Looking to throw. He's got first down and then some at midfield. Well, the two men come together and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively, brings up fourth down. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. And they will get to this one and down it at the 13-yard line. Back now in Miami. It's the Saints who hold the football, but they're trailing as we begin the fourth quarter of play. The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how it base Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off here the 32. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted, but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. Hey, seven, go. Second and five. Steps away to his left. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know. Well conditioned. And he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Again, it's Belage. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You take in charge. Then he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. So line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. 
Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that'll force upon him a third and 14. Drops him for a four-yard loss there, and that brings up fourth down. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on in the end zone for a touchback. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. Now, last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. See what happens. Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. And he'll be upended after a gain of five, up to the 25-yard line. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. So it's Saints football as we get your reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Throwing on first down. Clifford. Complete. Smith has it. No, oh, it's out. Smith lost it. But this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. I don't know about you, but I can hear and feel the sigh of relief all the way up here in our booth. That was palpable. The sideline, the friend there. No doubt about it. Ball goes over the sideline, able to retain possession. No turnover. <laughs> I know his coaches are screaming. Just hang on to the ball, man. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late-game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw's made. Where's the catch? Got a catch in that spot. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. He'll look to throw. This time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 44-yard line. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. He's back to throw. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. 12 yards there, good for a Saints first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Back to throw. Being chased out left. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Jayon Brown in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. They'll come up after the sack on a second and 12. They'll look to throw. Safarian Jenkins has it. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Let's go, defense. Our time. It's our time. Mike 
back to throw. And that is incomplete. He has had a great game defensively. He's been east-west, north-south, everywhere. Yeah, and I love how you describe that because to be a great defender, you have to be able to move up and back, sideline to sideline, and he's been fantastic. Reminds me of a young Charles Davis when he was playing Madden. Absolutely. Oh, wow. I thought you were going to go on the field, but okay, I see you. On fourth down, Clifford. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. A little clock management 101. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. And to give this time to the tailback. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. So now with six seconds remaining, we get a timeout on the field. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Now they try the right side here. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. Big one now, trying to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll try and run with Barrage. And an alley to run. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. And it was a bit of a strange game. They were held scoreless through the entire second half, but their first half output that's enough to carry them to victory. And that's an odd game to watch, isn't it? Because when we saw the output in the first half, you think to yourself, okay, they've got something working here. They know what they're doing. They'll continue that along. But instead, it's goose eggs in the second half. Fortunately, enough of a cushion and enough defense to carry them home.